My friends, hello and welcome to Golden Eye Speed Lore. And tonight we have a special episode for you all because many interesting things are afoot when it comes to Golden Eye's longest standing untied world records. Of course, here on screen is sort of a list of some of the most prestigious untitled records ever set in the game because they have remained untied for so, so long. And what's interesting, if we look towards the bottom end of this top 10 longest stunning untitled records ever, you know, these are the top 10 records that went, you know, three, four years, four and a half years without anyone being able to tie them. They all last at roughly 1600 days, these entries seven through 10. But if we scroll down and look at the current untied world records, we can see that Ace and Cali W are closing in on some of these records. You know, Facility Agent, Caverns Double Agent, they're approaching the realm that could knock out some of these records. And what's very interesting is that, in fact, some of the game's greatest records of all time, like Damn Agent 52 by Carl or Statue 00218 by Boss, are sort of in jeopardy of being knocked out of the top 10 by these records creeping up in day, total days untied. And so the question is, will we see any of these take over, join the top 10? How many? You know, as time goes by, GoldenEye history is perhaps about to change. And history is one of those things where you kind of have to step back and wait and see how things are influenced and see how things change. And given that it's been, you know, over four years in some of these great records, I think we've stepped back long enough to give some perspective on the matter. There are 24 untied records in GoldenEye 007 right now. That means there's 36 tied records. And so we're gonna start from the bottom, you know, the five or six records that have been set this year and work our way all the way to the top to the longest standing active untied world records and you know decide whether or not you know make a discussion will they take over and make the top 10 all-time list so with that being said we're going to start with the most recent untied world record which was set 79 days ago believe it or not and you know it's a very very good record in a lot of ways um although it's a level that's not mega mega optimized and so you know, with the new Arlene strategy, of course, we're seeing it's Bunker 2. It was inevitable that the time would mold and shape a few seconds here and there. And, uh, hey, that is indeed what happened. And eventually, Ace was able to improve this down to a, a place where he was pretty satisfied with it uh, to a time of 49 seconds. And that means there's been four seconds cut since the Arlene strategy was discovered. But let's take a look at the run, and in fact, it's a very, very nice, special run, the first run of the night. And let's dedicate to a speed lore champion, and this one will go out tonight to our pal E Street. A huge thanks to you, E Street, for supporting speed lore on Patreon. Let's watch the youngest of the game's current untied world records. So waiting some cinema. Nice, really nice um, warp there. Almost like Agent 20 timing. And then this is actually uh, quite a strategy. You know, we used to kind of dip into the hallway back there to lure out the clipboard guard, but you know, a better um, strategy to discover where we don't have to kind of dip in and kind of lose some time. So that is a very positive thing here. There, there is a key. And there we get the, the, uh, the, uh, oh, and look, that is one of the swaggiest things going on an untied run. There's the clipboard, almost headshots Nat. And, uh, you know, kind of accidentally getting your weapon switch interrupted. Well, you know, we'll watch it even once more, Fate Motif in chat, who says this seems unbeatable for real. And, um, you know, we can make that determination. Bunker 100, 49. 
very, very good record. There's certainly no doubt about that. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to pull up a, the, a 50 here by Ace. Because just to kind of compare what his 50 looked like um, set in 2021. And we can see a, we'll see a slight alteration in the opening strategy. This is his 50, by the way. And we can see it's a little bit... Uh, here we go. Yeah, there definitely something like a 47. It, like, But again, it's common, like, is that ace only? So here's the old lure. You kind of dip in and then around. Um, whereas the new lure to lure the clipboard guy, once again, we'll take a look. He kind of just runs right down the hallway, uh, shooting close enough to the you know, deep side of that hallway, and that'll lure the clipboard guy later. But let's be very, very picky on this to see if and what time can be safe. He pe so he peeks into the safe room, and that does matter to load a certain guard to make sure that the um, safe key can be picked up later. So there's one of the safe keys, number two. And then, of course, if he didn't look into the safe... Uh, room at the start there. I mean, this is a really, really good run. There's safe key number two. Uh, number one, rather. So, that all mattered a lot. Very difficult. Here is a bit of a stuck. Which resulted in the, you know, switching of the weapons. Again, a tiny stuck on that there. All things considered, you know, it's a really, really good run. Nice warp through there. And, like, he was getting some good warps and boosts all throughout the run. Um, but certainly, like, 48 is definitely possible if you're ace. Um, maybe even 47. And 49's the record. It's a great record. And again, like, like, you know, could this one remain untied for four and a half years? So it was only set a few months ago. And maybe it could, too. So he goes here, grabs the, uh, documents, and then the clipboard is gonna be... That gentleman. And then almost gets snapped. But I mean, yeah, 49 is, like, insanely good. And uh, as we can see here, he has got a 50 and a 52. But on the rankings, only Luke has a 51. He hasn't played in a long time. That's one of Luke's most recent uh, personal records, in fact. I'm pretty sure. Yep, certainly up there. And then, you know, you have Clem and uh, with 52. And then 53 was the old record before the Arlene strategy. So maybe Ludovic Begon Green could possibly, um, you know, get towards 50 and 49, but like, who else? And I think especially as Gold Knight ages, this has kind of become a, a common theme of our conversation around the game at this point in time. It's like, who is out there to lower or tie these records? And that's something very, very important to consider. Next up, we're going to have this great run. Um, I mean, this is actually obviously an amazing, amazing run. And, um, well, it's Train Agent 55 by, by Henrik. And what happened is he had 56 on Tide since 2020. It took three years for Ace to match it. So if he hadn't done that, this record could be, you know, racking up days on the list. Um, but only a couple days after Ace tied 56, Henrik went out there and got 55. Amazing, amazing speedrun, you know, legendary level, always one of the best records in the game. And we'll dedicate this one to our speedrun champion, Four Day Bender. So a huge thanks, Four Day, for all your support of speedrun on Patreon. Nice blasting through the boxes. I mean, this run is just so pristine. There's almost not much to say about it other than just watching the brilliance take place. He missed a B press there, which probably cost him point two. But you know, once again, who, who else is going to get a better run? You know. Zips right out of there, you know, diving down towards leaving, crouching as he's doing the last two locks. Just one of the most unbelievable records in uh, in Goldeneye 007. 55. It, it's just it's just so insane. If we go back here and click on the train rankings, you know, Ace is 56, Rutsu and Repo 57, and then like who else is there? Like nobody's even within three seconds 
aside from these four guys. And it's like, yeah, Rutsu and Ace, with a concerted effort, could maybe have a chance. But who else? You know, like, literally, who else? Many people are at a minute and, and lower. You know, many of the top ten. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, what, what can you say? Like, maybe this will remain untied forever. But, like... We're kind of coming to an age where it's like, who else is going to do it? You know, there's a Miss B, but that loses you maybe 1.1, 1.2. And then his locks are just so good that, like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, we're, we're nitpicking to find one tiny tenth of a second loss because of how good the run is otherwise. So he's, like, crouching down now, and it's just simply, simply marvelous. And on the all-time list, this is now um, July 8th, so it stood stood untied for 121 days. So that's pretty cool. Next up were the two frigate runs by Ace. So these were, were kind of like um, white whales for him. You know, it, it, it's kind of hard to believe, actually, that he got 57. Because... I mean, 58 is such a story time into its own right. And I'm pretty sure it's actually on the list up there. I'm going to take a look after this run. Um, but Ace eventually tied 58, and then... He knew he was failing 57 pace. And I mean, he's really one of the only guys who can fail 57 pace consistently enough to... Uh, you know, give it a chance out there. You know, in Secret Agent, they say only... He, it was once believed the odds were much worse than they than they actually are, I guess. And there's certain things with like looking directions and shooting shots that can help with escape odds, at least by luring guards out of the way and uh, that kind of thing. But the odds of uh, uh, getting a, an escaped hostage here are like something like one in fifty, and they were kind of believed to be like one in thousands um, before. So the fifty-seven is 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 amazing there's no doubt about that and if we look at the uh you know database yeah luke's 58 here was untied for you know four and a half years from march 2017 to september 2021 and so um you know 58 is always insane because the first ever speed lore episode was frigate secret agent and the record was... Was it a minute at the time? Or 59? Ace eventually tied it, and then the next day, Pettit comes in there and... Uh, I mean... <laughs> it's been so long, you know, I feel like... I feel like I'm... You know, I feel like time's flying for all of us. Yes, yeah, so it was a minute. I did the first ever speed lore episode on the stage, Ace is 59, and then like three days later... Pettit post 58 and it took Ace four years to tie and then a, a handful of people did tie it um, but for Ace 57 it's it's really really insane and it's kind of poetic I'll say that you know these four records down here are the most at risk of getting bumped out of the top 10 and one of them is this frigate secret agent 58 and so there is kind of this symmetry there I'll say but yeah, as Mystic Cheese pointed out in chat, Objective A completes where? Here. 101 on the in-game timer. And uh, he enters the boat like a high 102. So it was probably, you know, 55 pace hostages. 56 conservatively, maybe 55. And Ace says, I think there's some lag whenever the JP text pops up on screen. So I was worried I would screw up the last turn down the ramp to the boat on that 57. LOL. That is a really funny thing to think about. I mean, Boss famously missed the ramp on his 103 or missed the stairs uh, when that was untied, you know, 16 years ago. Aren't we all getting so, so old? But hey, great run, baby. 57. And then this 103 was, like, definitely one of his white whales. Um, he played this, I I'm just going to guess, 200 to 300 hours 
over the course of uh, years and years and years on and off. And finally he said, look, I'm going to do like 25 fails a night and see where the chips lie. And finally, finally, finally the run came together. So uh, let's watch Ace's Frigate 00103. Again, these, you know, these records set in 2023. I'm sure we'll review them once again at the uh, end of year uh, recap. But they're certainly important to paint the picture of the sort of new age on Tides and uh, where the game is headed right now in relation to the remaining untitled records. Ace um, knew he wasn't getting through the door there, so he, like, quickly unpaused, which is kind of interesting because, like, function as a quick pause which then speeds up the next two pauses so like it really lost virtually no time all in all and it was just a very wise experienced move to do there a lot of people wouldn't have been able to sort of um well you're just not thinking on all cylinders at all times that's sort of the key that's something i realized back in like 2007 is in order to compete with Ace even on one level, you have to be thinking on all cylinders at all times, because that's what he does. Completes in the fade. <gasps> you gotta gasp whenever Bond enters the boat, you know? You just have to. And there's a Frigate 103. Pretty cooked run. And, uh, you know, once again, 104. He'd been playing 104 for years, and then went for 103 and finally got it. And those times were three days apart, so maybe he was kind of running on healthy luck from the uh, the frigate gods were finally giving his him his due after all this time, and finally he was able to uh, complete these uh, runs, and they're still untied to this very day, which is quite something, of course. Frigate. Yeah, you know, you won, I guess you wonder on frigate, White Ted James there has been pretty quiet lately. Many were wondering if he, uh, any strategies he would discover would lead to something or another, and and they still might, you know. 21 is still out there on the uh, table for agent using, you know, the 2.3 control style. But uh, who knows? So, E Street in chat is asking, I wonder how far the average frigate speedrun lasts. How frequently do you get to the end to wait for hostages, given the huge impact of level timing? That's a great question, E Street. So, like, if you watch someone like Jimbo, I would always razz Jimbo for this. He would quit out, like, every five, like, 20 seconds into the run on average. And that's so bad, because you, you're not getting enough runs to the end. You want more runs to the end, because... It's like the more runs you get to the end, the more lottery tickets you're buying in the frigate lotto luck, you know? And so you want to get every run to the end. You want everyone to have a chance. And that's why skill and consistency is rewarded on the stage. Um, I would say for Ace, <coughs> Ace is probably getting to the end, I don't know, 20% of the time, 30% of the time. Maybe, maybe less, but more often than others. And one of the things is, like, you really, like, you know, my personal record's 109 right now. So if I was playing it, I could get a lot of runs that were 106, 107. And so I kind of have leeway to get to the end and have a possible chance at a personal best. But when you have 104, you're going for 103, obviously it's much, much harder to, uh, to get to the end on pace. And you want to see a hostage escape there for sure every time. Yes, yeah, and uh, yes, it's a good point. I'll, I'll clip back there. Ace has uh, mentioned in chat, you know, once again clarified why he paused and unpaused in the engine room there. It's because his uh, location where he initially tried to pause, he hadn't fully nudged through the doorway. And thus, if he paused there, he would have blocked the hostage and probably not completed it. But by realizing this right here, it didn't get through. So he's like, okay, I got to move a little bit more. Um, that is what I was des describing as firing on all cylinders at all the time. And that's something, you know, if you watch Ace throw history, that he's always able to do um, when speedrunning this game. And the thing is, you think, like, that would be an error, right? To pause and then have to unpause and repause again. 
but it basically ended up functioning as a quick pause, and so um, it worked out. It made this it made his last two pauses slightly faster, and so hey, you know I'm talking like tenths of seconds, but it's one of those things where a lot of people, and this is sort of what I was getting at in response to E Street there, a lot of other speedrunners would have had this happen. I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm gonna quit out, you know. But because Ace kept playing, it happens that he got the run and he was rewarded with it, you know. So that's a lesson I would say to many people, you know. Keep on going, you know. This applies, I think, universally in speedrunning. How many times have we seen, say, you know, not to, I'm not gonna name names, but a Super Mario 64 speedrunner, maybe on 120 star, and maybe they get a bit too tilted at their carpetless setup or even leading up to carpetless and they reset or quit out even though they still could have gotten a personal record you know my philosophy is keep going and cutting down time you know keep cutting down time towards your goal as opposed to oh it's not my goal i'm gonna quit out and, and reset I, I don't think that's the most healthy mindset anyhow silo double <laughs> this one kind of has an interesting story to it because, like, am I salty? I'm kind of over, you know, being over being salty in this day and age. But as we can see here, Ace got 121 in 2014. It was racking up days as an untied until I got it in 2017. But then no one else got Silo 00121 at all for five and a half years, which made it, like, the least achieved record in history or up up there you know pretty crazy stuff that no one was able to get a 121 and then ace came in and got 120 which was uh i would say overdue lower is definitely possible but it's it's still quite a, a remarkable run and we will dedicate this one to our speed lord champion fc bojangles thank you fc for all of your support of speed lore on patreon Let's, uh, let's watch this run. Ace's original 121 had quite a bad stuck on, uh, Orb Moth at the end. And I think this 120 is still, like, far from perfect. But, once again, a lot of guys tried to get this record and were simply not able, you know? really good to like drill those six shots home on that guard even though they were limb shots just to keep ro rolling the time sort of um with the early door cycles you kind of catch up if things were a little bit slow it's in here the top of the door is open which is key it can be a bit random i'm pretty sure ace usually gets the top of the door open but it can be kind of random blasts through there nice headshot on the guard on the left Squeaks through, 43 dat, 41 circuit. I remember like a 37 pause there was really good, and so he's two seconds ahead of where I was getting on my 121 paces. And so he's definitely on pace for like a 119, and it ends up being a 120. Takes it to the camera. Nice snap. So, warping at 118 would be 118 pace, 117, 119. Nah, it's a 120. It was a 120 pretty much all the way. But, um... Yeah, just the way the time kind of ebbs and flows on the state. It ended up being a 120.51. So, not a high 120. Um, kind of getting close to... To 119, you know. And A certainly could could get such a time but hey such is life pretty good run and if we look at the rankings once again we'll see that like nobody you know a few guys have come close Irie Jake you know Mark and Clem of course but like nobody's even at the 121 and so it raises the question who who is there to get 120 Who's there to get 119? You know, our pal B Rose actually, you know, has one of the best, better recent times, 124 on the stage. Can anyone tie the 120? And like, 
again, this is just, we're still into this year, let alone previous years, you know, so maybe, may, you know, could I do it? You know, do I really want to sit down and grind? You know, it might take me 100, 150 hours to, uh, to get this, to get 120. I could probably do it, you know, I could, I could have a, a reasonable chance of getting it. It's one of my better stages, you know. But let's say I don't do it. Let's say Mark and Clem don't do it. You know, will anyone get 120? And I think that's a question that we're going to ask ourselves at this point in time throughout the rest of the night, you know? I think something kind of, uh... Something that I kind of thought about recently is, like, the reason speedrunning and streaming in 2014 was so exciting is because everyone who was doing it knew that it hadn't peaked yet. It's like we're in this new innovative thing and it's still going up. And who knows where the peak is? Who knows where it'll take us? But nowadays, we've kind of seen the peak. We've seen the sort of potential you have streaming and speedrunning and where it can take you. And kind of the unknown, it's kind of like price discovery in a market. It makes things really, really exciting. And so even doing, you know, speed lore in 2017 or 18, there was this sort of knowledge that like someone new could still come along and get a great run and, and be a great player, right? And that was certainly the case in like 2014 when we were first starting out and we've seen some of these guys come along, like Cali W's for example. But this idea of like, is someone still, now we're in 2023, is someone still gonna come along and still gonna improve these records? And like, I feel like as time goes on, the answer to that question becomes more and more no, you know? That's just sort of the impression I get. I can't really give any specific reason why logically you know, it's a 26-year-old game, yeah, but when it was 16 years old, people knew people were still coming and, and playing it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty insane. Pretty insane. But, you know, speaking of one of these players who came along in the more recent era, we have Cali W here. And this is his Statue Agent 217. The first untied of the year. And um, once again, you know. Okay. It's... After this attempt, uh, I'll I'll play one streets attempt and see how far I can get Val. I'm gonna fuck it up. But who knows? Maybe I get him really far, and I can finally cake a record. What do you say? It's one of those things where... Okay, this is going to be 217 right here, and then we'll play Streets, okay? Oh my god, what a call. What an insane call. If Cali doesn't come along and get the 217s on Statue, like, who... Who does, you know? And it kind of makes you realize the sort of razor's edge... Of history. You know? And even... There's some... There's a bit of symmetry with... Oh, look at that building speed on the rock. That's a really good. That's such a good strat. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Come on. Please. <laughs> Please, let it be. Such an insane... Uh, Trev shot. Does he get a boost? One more. Oh, <gasps> come on. Chained boost. I don't know if I've really this ever is pace. watched this run and paid attention to it much. Like, that chained boost is really good. And, like, the way he calls the run is really good. People in chat calling to affect the FR. Don't block me. Chris G says gets the luckiest two boosts ever. I mean, on Agent, it is rare to get those that chained boost. Really well played. Come on. The block there. Mid-38. 35 oh, I can save it. 
Man, was this like mid 217? Come on. Pretty insane. Oh my god. He didn't he didn't go safe at all. He it looks like his movement was like kind of unideal coming up to the hill there, but like I'm talking by a few frames. Well, boys. I told you. I told you. Oh my god. <sighs> there. There, there is no way. Well, now we can play streets. Ah. I even fucked up the ending slightly. Dude, no way. <laughs> I caked it. Have I ever caked a time? Now I have. Holy shit, first on tide of 2023. Ah, oh, first pace in three years. Yeah, holy shit. Wow, I called it. Two more to go. Holy shit, the one run I get a double boost. And it was like a chained boost too. That's kind of funny. Like, uh, his commentary is almost like I, I hadn't watched the run previously. But his commentary is almost identical to what to my commentary. Chain boost, slightly you know misstepped at the end. Um, kind of funny to us, you know. It's just you have the eye through the years of playing the game, right? So that's all it is. Two seventeen. It's just kind of crazy because obviously he was the one to get two seventeens. You know, Chris G has two seventeens on Secret Double Agent now. Um, but 270 agent Cali and you just kind of wonder the state of statue had Cali not come along right for one reason or another and I guess the what I think is even more interesting is like the symmetry well not maybe more but Cali played streets for a long time I don't I, don't, I almost don't want to like poke the sleeping bear but he cakes the statue 217s in a grand in a grand scheme of things but he's unable to get streets 153s. And so it's like, what does that tell? Is it tell like 153s are impossible or may never happen? Or, you know, is it, is it a thing of destiny? Or like, you know, what? how exactly do you interpret, um, you know, two, 217 statue versus streets 153 and why one exists and the other doesn't? And that's something that certainly I reflect a lot on having held this record since since December 2005 um yeah I shouldn't I shouldn't have mentioned that and poked a sleeping bear to be honest but hey it is what it is next up we're gonna watch the remarkable <laughs> surface 2 secret agent 46 by Joachim uh this run is absolutely fried um I have basically no words for it you need to get a nade and you need to Arlene the nade from very, very far away into the comms room. You get one chance to do this every 20 minutes. I, I truly don't know how people do this. I have 50 old style pro. I, I just, I think there's a kind of two kinds of players. The one who can practice this for three hours you know, in a practice ROM and get the mo the motion down and then clutch it every time for when it's when it's real. And the second type is me, um, who is the opposite, who can practice it 100 hours and never, under any circumstance, actually pull that off when it matters. And Joachim is certainly one of the former. And then Chuck the Mine, getting the door from above. I, I, I can't speak. Like, this may be the most underrated GoldenEye World Record in history. This may be the secret best record in history. I mean, maybe someone will clip that when, like, 46 is tied and it's like a three-liner or something, if that ever happens. But, like, 
come on, man. This run is 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 actually. What do you say? What do you say about a run like this? I have nothing to say. No. <laughs> You are leading the nade, which is there's so much pressure to pull this off, and then you still pull off the mine throw as like a, a depot train shot while also clutching the door from above, which is like a one frame, one angle window to do. How many seconds is it from throw? This may be the most technically demanding 12 seconds in all of Goldeneye. I'm shocked. I'm simply shocked and awed. And I have no more words. And good day in chat to V Sweat as always. Pleasure to see you in here. I mean, it's 46, just unbelievable. November 2022, um, be at the time of 47, which was a very good time, you know? And uh, a handful of guys had 47. No one's gotten 47 since 46 has been the world record. So no one has yet achieved 47 as a non record. And that's always kind of a cute little thing to, to think about. Um, when that does or doesn't happen. Man, it's it's just kind of crazy to, to think and see sometimes, like, how far back we got to go to see some, some uh, untieds and stuff, you know? Like, if we look at the time cutters, I'm looking here, 2022, you know, handful of records here and there that we're making our way through. And the next one up is uh, Callie's damn 115 another obviously pretty insane record that um but it's outdated it, it should be like a 112 use a pretty cool strategy yeah i like facility on jp i think it's i think it's good the only thing is you can't get tns yeah, jungle's pretty bad no matter what system you're on, but it's so shit on English. This, of course, uses the shooting through the window strategy. Or NTSC, rather. And that's what we mean when we say English. Technically, PAL is English too, but... Nice boost. Just to be clear. Alright, this is it. Calls it again. I mean, the first five shots broke the window. That was pretty good. Come on. That was slow, but... Again, five shots broke the window. Very impressive. Come on. I, it might be good enough. <laughs> nope, it's not. <laughs> it's... I was so far away from the door. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I know. Clems cool hype. last alarm, though. I missed the B press. Hype in chat. Uh, it might still be it. I don't know. I, I think it's a boostless run. I don't know. We could get a 115.98. But we've had a lot of uh, 116s that were just... You know. Yeah, I think so, too. Never mind. Boom. There we go. <laughs> no fucking way. Holy shit, I missed the B press. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Goldeneye. Thank you. We are done with them for now. Oh, that was it. Oh, thank you. 52% accuracy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. 115. Thank you. Wow. Goodbye, damn. Lord have mercy. That last alarm was so shit. I missed the B press. But the run was good enough, I guess. 
No, that's a cool run. Um, definitely quite significant because of how Marks 116 what, you know, is on the LSU list. Um, was on time for f almost six years, which is pretty insane. Um, obviously, Damn, SA 115 has quite a long way to go. It's almost at one year, which is pretty cool. Happy anniversary. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm going to watch it again the second half of the run because there are obviously, like, like the first half is pristine. Like, to this point, a boost, it's pristine right to here, which is about 38 seconds. So it's about halfway through. Obviously, he feels like the first five shots here break the glass, which is good. He feels like the next few shots are a bit slow, and they probably are, like, in the grand scheme of things, if you were to, like, really optimize the strategy. Same exact things happens with this alarm. And so, like, maybe that could have been uh, a touch faster. But then this door, he misses the B-press again. Or at least I'm, I'm thinking of... Uh, Henrik's train run, so miss B presses are somewhat common, I guess, on these runs. So obviously, the, the point is the run isn't perfect, perfect, perfect. But because he was the first person to pull off a decent, solid run with this new strategy that resulted in it being 115, um, you know, obviously something like 114 is possible if you were like, like the Mark Rutsu 116 version of this strategy is like 114, maybe even 113, you know? So there's still time out there on this level. But once again, like, very few people have showed interest in playing this level with this strategy. And so it kind of makes you think and wonder, like, you know, who will tie it? Will anyone tie it? And uh, sort of what's the fate overall of, of the stage in the game? You know, Crithalith in chat asks... Will this year have the least total time cut? And, like, it's possible. We're at six seconds. 09 was at eight. And so, like, yeah, we might be on 09 levels. And it makes sense. Like, this is the thing. Many would say, oh, the game is dying. The speedrun community is dying. It's over. It's Jover, whatever the Zoomers say these days. But it's like, we came back from 2009 cutting only eight seconds and that was only 12 years after the game's release. It makes sense that 26 years after the game's release, we would have less time cut. And so I think there's still a lot of um, a lot of game left to be played, you know. Even if even if there's no more on tides this year, I think there's still a lot of uh, game game to be played. I'll say. Cavern Secret Agent 111 by Bands. Very good run. Very cool run. This was the whole story and arc where he had... Oh man, it was for some reason way louder than every other, uh... Every other video tonight. He has the volume max boost, I guess. Um, this was the whole arc where he got Aztec Secret Agent 129. Thinking it was untied. But then it was revealed that Riolo had actually gotten 125 untied a few days before. And so bands came out and thought he had the untied and then he didn't and then he took it like a champ and instead of you know uh making threads about it and 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 whinging and you know lamenting the world which you know that's certainly something that i would have done 15 years ago instead of doing all that ban said okay fair enough i didn't get the untied on aztec secret agent i will go get another untied and um that's what he did here with Cavern's Secret Agent 111. Nice boost there. Really good, you know, objective um, area over here. And then a really good mine throw. I think there was one small stock at the end. But, like, in the grand scheme, like, that's insane. That is completely insane. The mine blows up and just completes. Chucks the mine. This gets so laggy. Tiny touch stuck on the right side of the hallway. But it's so laggy that, like, it barely is important and nails the warp such a good run um unbelievable run and uh, yes yeah, sam o is in the chat now and he indeed may appear uh moment in a few moments and it's actually kind of interesting because as well since this whole situation 
where bands thought he had achieved the untitled record. Um, and this is going into you know, spring 2022. But someone had hoarded a faster untitled record. Since then, we haven't really seen any mega horde projects. And so that makes me wonder if sort of the days of hoarding are kind of over, maybe in part due to this incident. Could it be? Perhaps. Cavern Secret Rachel 111, great run. Next up, I mean, there are multiple videos about this run on YouTube. Um, maybe I'll just say nothing and show it. Bunker 1 Secret Agent, 19 seconds. Two second untied on a 19 second stage. Um, certainly the best world record that has ever been played in Goldeneye. Uh, probably will never be tied. Um, I never say this stuff. I literally never say this stuff, but um, yeah. Never, never tied, never beaten, etc. Um, Abyssoft asks, didn't you, Carl, and Bismuth all do levels, all do videos on this level? I don't think Bismuth did, unless I'm mistaken, but Carl and I certainly did. And, um, yeah, so many people already know the story of this record, but the brief, brief story. Ace got this last year in April 2022 and hoarded it for a year. And, like, I... It's one of those things where I thought about, like, making a post detailing the entire story. Because there's still stuff that, like, people don't exactly know. But, oh, May 2nd, 2022. So I was off by a couple days. But, basically, it was also part of sort of an anti-hoarding project. Where we were going to make a hoard and hoard for a very long time. And make it so that it would be silly for anyone else to, like, hoard. It'd be too risky, risking losing your untides and, and whatnot. It was separate to the Hordapalooza, where that same thing happened to bands on the previous run. Um, but yeah, we kind of germinated this strategy where, what if you did the whole run full speed, and then paused later and did a sort of a, a, a flick-back camera shot, and it worked out. I got 22 with it, with 1.1, no cruise control. And uh, that was sort of enough. You know, the, the, the pace was there. That made Ace believe 19 was possible. And then even so, Ace still played like 100 hours for it. So it's like, when the best player on his best level is using a new strategy which saves a bit of time and still needs to play 100 hours to get the time, that's how you know the time is like really, 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 really insane. <laughs> and... He ended up hoarding it for a year. He had one... Uh, what scared him into unhoarding it? Because he wasn't going to unhoard it when he did, which was like summer of this year. But what scared him into unhoarding it was that Joris was going to post a few hoarded times. And Ace was worried that Joris knew about this sort of new, you know, camera flick strategy. He knew Joris was a very proficient 2.x player. And so Ace had kind of worried that Joris might get, you know, 20 on the stage and tie his record, um, which, you know, which wasn't really the record. Man, it, I, I, honestly, I'm just going to be glad if hoarding is kind of done now because it makes things so convoluted and, like, going back in time, like, alternate timelines and stuff. Maybe I should write up one kind of final post about this and then explain what, what all happened. Um, maybe one day. Keep your eyes peeled on the Elite Forum for that, if it ever happens. But I'm glad if hoarding's done. I'm 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 glad it's um. I'm glad it's done. You know. 
And yes, basically, Velatoje in chat asks, doesn't it feel kind of wrong to secretly hold a strat while someone else is actively running the level? The answer is yes. This caused a lot of backlash when it came to Bunker 2 Agent in 2021. And that's sort of where this kind of anti-hoarding movement came from. So, yeah, there you go. There's that. And um, speaking of anti-hoarding, now we're getting to the Marvelous record set by probably the most uh, ardent anti-hoarder of all. This is the one and only Sam O'Sammy. Depot, Secret Agent 38 Seconds. Untitled record, raw, raw video footage. And uh, let's watch the run. Obviously, you know what? I got 39 in 2015 untied, my second most recent untied. And it was, um, lasted about two years untied. Three years? But then it kind of landslided into getting like a three liner, four liner, so like 15 people had it. And Samo made a determination that he wanted to get 38. And the move, like, this is, it's actually a really, really good run. Like, on one hand, if I take a step back and look at all these runs we've watched tonight, I would say that this 38 is like the most likely to be tied. And that may be true. Like from a technical perspective. But it doesn't take away that it's still an amazing record. And sometimes a record has this sort of golden aura around it that makes people respect it so much that they're going to give it space to breathe and not attempt to tie it. But amazing run, and it, it's made only more amazing uh, for something we'll get into in a minute, which is, of course, that it was achieved live when hanging out with the boys, which is, you know, one of the things that uh, makes it all the, all the merrier. I'm gonna, like, basically mute that run, because last time I played on stream, uh, I think I ruptured a few viewers' eardrums. But this boost in here is like so hard to parlay into anything like meaningful. And then the five quick shots to boost the safe key is like very, very, very hard to pull off. You know, when 39 was the record, we were experimenting with all sorts of strategies where you would boost th through the mainframe on the way out. But the fact that Samuel was able to find a way to boost on the way in um, really, really makes this quite remarkable. It's sort of the difference in making something 38 pace rather than 39 pace. Simply amazing. What can you say? What a great run. This isn't have five boosts, does it? There's no way this has five boosts. Let's see. One, two, three, four, one, two, so two. That's not really a boost, I don't think. Three. Does he get another one? Oh, he does. Oh my god. That's, wow, that's insane. That is uh, quite, quite, quite something. And yeah, here's his, like, I just have to mute this. It's live. He's in the top right. I will put it down to 1% volume when we get to the actual run, okay? When we get to, like, the reaction. But he's here with the boys in the middle. Everyone's pumped. Okay, I'm at, I'm at 2%, 1% volume. Just watch them in the middle react to it. it. It's cool that there was like a meet of five guys when he got it live. It makes it one of the most epic records ever set. Like, it really does. Especially they're Australian, they're like, you know, awkward. You know, some guys might be awkward. They're kind of pumped lads for each other, which is makes it really, really cool. One thing I want to theorize, speaking of people in chat theorizing, was about Damn Double O. Now, this may literally be a just goose things, okay? And maybe it'll take me to actually play it out and go for it. And like, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't really want to play right now. But here's my proposition. Damn double O window shot. So you play damn double O like normal. You go here. You do the window shot on damn double O, okay? 
Just listen to me on this. It's done. You enter the tower, okay? You enter the tower after doing the window shot, warp through the door and go downstairs. That way, you don't have to like stop and do the, do the alarm while you're doing that. Now you leave through the first, on the way back out of the dam, you leave through this first tower, you come out of here, you do the second second alarm window shot, go to the third tower and come back. I feel like that could potentially be faster. I feel like at least needs to be tested. And um, I simply am, for lack of a better word, too uninspired to test it. But I will share my knowledge and my theoretical imaginary strategy um, with you all tonight. Maybe someone else will test it. So once again, first tower, window shot, Go downstairs, come back up the first tower, second tower window shot, third tower, come back out. Maybe it's faster. Maybe time will prove that it's faster. Anyways, that's enough uh, theorizing for tonight. And where are we at here? Let's take a look. We're getting... Okay, so that's everything done in 2022. Hard to believe. I mean, what's hard to believe, I guess, as we're kind of halfway through, roughly, we've shown 11... A runs 13 to go is just that like there are only six maybe seven records left from the pre-plague era that's what we have to call on youtube i apologize but i guess we'll uh, discuss that a little bit more in a bit next up is yo keem's runway 0027 there's a couple here that I, I just don't have like too much to say, but I'll show them because they're uh, obviously untied, so they need to be shown in this context. But this is from late 2021. For a long time, grabbed at the untied of 28 because no one else really learned the um, Arlene strategy here. But Joachim finally didn't pull it off and got uh, 27, which is a really good time. So that one's on Arlene, but then Arlene... Arlene, Arlene, obviously it looks way easier than it is, and that explosion, he needed, the grenade explodes in like pulses of three or four pulses, and he needed a second pulse explosion for this to successfully complete and become 27, and you can really see it there, like, if you know what you're looking for. There it is, so it explodes, one, the second pulse is what blows up the drone. And if it was a third pulse explosion blow up, it would have failed. Because, like, the level unloaded there, you know, the level unloaded at that exact point in time. So, really good run, very significant run in the game's history. And um, it kind of answers a question that I had brought up earlier, which was, like, who's going to do it? Like, realistically, who's going to do it? And that applies to so many of these levels, right? Like, who's going to be the one to step up and tie this time that requires this, like, esoteric knowledge and this, you know, f feeling unrewarding grinding for hundreds of hours? And this, and I think many people asked that about Grav's Runway Double O Agent 28. But in this case specifically, Joachim was the one to step up and do it. And so, there you go. Another one, late uh, 2021. This was just a, a heck of a grind. And, um, you know, Cali must have had thousands of 102s, if I had to estimate. And um, all you can say is this, was, this is Cali grinding. This is Cali doing what he does best. Service One Agent 101. Just basically a perfect. Uh, A perfect, a perfect performance on the stage. I believe he achieved this on a date when there was a solar eclipse, although it was probably not visible from his area. June 9, 2021. That makes sense. It was in uh, annular, annular solar eclipse, which is cool. Obviously not as cool as a total solar eclipse, but sort of in elite lore as sort of a I don't, it may not even be specific to the elite, but certainly in the elite, we sort of have this kind of joked about lore that eclipses give you extra power when speedrunning. 
And so on or around eclipses, you may get some amazing speedruns. And there was an eclipse meet in 2017, and then like Cal gets this run on 2021. Just perfect locks, basically. And um, zooming in with... I mean, being able to masterfully play this level with 2.x is very, very difficult. And that's like the big difference in making 101 possible. 15 shots... I mean, just a beautiful run. We'll watch the ending of it once more. And yes, hello in chat to Nate the Gratian. Good to see you as well. Good to see everybody in chat. You know, it's one of those things... I mean, to be brutally honest, sometimes I think, okay, I'm doing a lore this month. It takes me a lot to kind of muster up and turn the stream. But then once we get going, it's a great time. It's great to see everybody in chat hanging out, having a good time, enjoying some amazing, amazing world record quality speedruns. Like the 101 by... Cali W. Wow, it's simply amazing. So good job there. That's been untied for what, like two years now, roughly? Two and a half years? So like, man, that's hard to believe. Huh. None of these are still untied up here. But that's crazy. 2021. Wow. Now we're getting to 2020? Man, I just... Like, as as I'm clicking through, it's like really kind of like hitting me and flooding me the whole kind of plague era. Which, I don't know, is it, you get like flashbacks? Is it like PTSD to some extent? Like, what exactly is it? Um, but the fact that, yeah, look, like Callie's... June 9, 2021, and then the next most recent still standing on Tide is from October 2020, which is Clem's Surface 200118, which is a great run, and uh, I'm going to put that on next. And it's a cool run, commentator run. Um, I don't think it was done live. I think Clem is, like, re-watching it. I could be wrong, though, but it's a very epic run. So let's dedicate this one to our pal... Mr. Moxie, our speed lore champion. A huge thanks, Mr. Moxie, for your support of speed lore on Patreon. Let's take, take a look. Strong. Yeah, so Clem is actually replaying the run back. He got it off stream. He's Dude, I'm so it hyped right now. Oh my god. Finally. Got this where I wanted it. Finally. And it's the last day I can play it for like two days, too, so I gotta get ready for... Yeah, this, I think this is the run. Very nice first alarm, first camera. Uh, you know, you always call them alarms when watching runs here. Oh, man. Great angle. I'll try to do the third camera. Last bullet, dude. I didn't do it the third camera exactly if I wanted to, but I heard the last bullet hit. I knew I got it. I was like, oh my god. Nice setup for the window. Three three hits. Three hits. Not the best, but these comms, dude. Look how good the comms were, man. I was like, I was like, okay, this is my one shot here. Don't birdie the mine throw. I was like, just don't birdie the mine throw. <laughs> I was so nervous, man. Look, it was a low eight. It was a low missed, eight. Slightly missed the board. I probably lost on seventeen, but I lagged in. It wasn't that bad. It was like a decent miss work. Yeah, it wasn't a bad miss work. He's typing up a storm in chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Holy shit! Thanks, everybody. I'm really hyped. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I didn't stream it. I wanted to, but... <laughs> it happens. It happens. You don't stream it. I mean, wow, Wotus in chat. That kind of shows you how old this run is getting. And, um... What was it achieved? Um, October 2020. Man, this run's three years old now. This is, like, blowing my mind, I hate to say. Like, I knew we were going to get to this, but, like, that's starting to blow my mind significantly. Um... 
what I was going to say about this run is it's kind of an interesting, I'll call it like a Goldilocks zone, where it is a very, very, very good run, and it could remain untied for a long time. But unlike something like Dam SA 115, or Statue 217, uh, or a few of these others where someone really needs to like step up and grind a very focused special... I don't know why it feels different, but like I feel like dozens of players could get this if they grinded it out. You know, if he had a nade, um, if you if you went for a nade, you could have a faster comms area, which is obviously um, you could save time that way. Ilu was experimenting with a ton of strategy ideas. Like if you had a nade, you could prime the nade here, chuck it, blow up the comms and then still pull off this shot. It's hard because of lag, but you still could, and then, then you wouldn't have to turn around and back strafe here. So it would be like maybe a second or two faster with a nade. Um, obviously, not requiring a nade helped significantly because you know you could consistently grind out runs with a chance every time. Like that made a huge difference. You know, he misses the warp there, half a second roughly. Ilu was experimenting with stuff like skipping the first camera entirely and using a nade for that later. You could even do that with two nades for... But then it's like, you know, drawing all the pieces together, like a really good um, east cam, I called it, a really good north cam, and then, you know, a nade here, a window shot, and another nade for the first or south cam... Um, that gets like 114 even, 113 pace runs. Ilu like almost completed a 114 a couple of times, 114, 115. So there are strategies out there that make this very obviously beatable. And so I think that that's why this, this record is in such like a great kind of Goldilocks zone where even though it's beatable, it's still an amazing, amazing record that has remained on tie for three plus years and like will take a, a, a significant effort to beat just the way there's still so many strategies you can draw up make it really cool in my opinion but 118 great run and speaking of cool runs the, these runs are sort of sort of what I'm getting at with like this one's cool this one's cool because it's Joris on jungle these are also untied for uh for a long time and in this one he was at a meet with green it's two french lads hanging out having a good time and it's a great run and so we're going to dedicate to our speedler champion gop 1386 a huge thanks gop for your support of speedler on patreon let's watch baby let's watch joris masterfully masterfully play jungle double o agent the great French meat of the plague era. There are numerous stories of people, um, that was a really nice turning throw there. That was like pristine. There are numerous stories of the leaders meeting up during that era when it was, you know, technically unlawful, which, you know, well, I think my sarcasm can speak for itself in that regard. I won't get into it too much deeper. But here we go. Joris knows he's got a chance. Really good Xenia. Nice side boost there. Chucks a mine at that drone, which is very uncommon. Warps up. Bingo, bango. Mine detonation. Late to save leg. Great idea. Oh, Great record there by Joris.
La même chose. Ouais, c'est exactement la langue qu'on voulait. Voilà. I would love to make an edit of this run with a full translation subtitles. That'd be cool. Um, and yes, hello and chat to our, our good pal, maybe use me blade. Indeed. I've not streamed for a while, but here we are enjoying an epic speed lore. At towards the end here, when he warps, he says, je pense que c'est le run. That means I think it's the run. And they speak mostly English or Franglais. Oh. Yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be fun to do the whole subtitles. It's kind of cool. Makes the reaction, you know, more accessible and whatnot. But uh, very cool run. And this was achieved July 4, 2020. So you can imagine, think about July 4, 2020. It's the heat of summer. Everyone's outside. You know what? I, I can't help myself but to get into it. You know, every every. Okay, anyways, stay home, guys. Don't uh, you know? Anyway, okay. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. They met up and had a good time and got the untied. So, uh, okay, great. A couple months earlier, he had gotten this time Jungle SA fifty one, in which you know set the stage for him to get the double untied on these two, on these two levels. And fifty one is insane because. You know, the thing with 50, like, Jungle SA has been one of those levels where, at least with 54 and 53, they were considered like the best record in the game when they were achieved by a Lu in, in 06 and then Ace in 07. And Jungle SA 53 is on the list of top 10 longest stereo tides. We went over that in, in big detail in, uh, I think it was season two of Speed Lore. And we'll take a look at that again. Oh man, great. Just like no back boosts, perfect nine headshots, like what more can you ask for? Different strategy there because he used um, a nade shot instead of a mine. A nice boost coming out of that, wow. Like this run, like this run is, I would call it beyond perfect. It's like a perfect jungle SA run is 52. And this one, like he gets extra boosts in kind of places where you like you wouldn't typically expect to get boosts but um yeah simply amazing yeah he skips 52 there which is pretty insane yeah was so alchemass in chat mentions a story where joris was having to go for to duplicate a, a record that he had, you know, misrecorded. I believe it was Jungle 0053, and he ended up getting 52 instead. Because this one he skipped over 52 and went to 51. Yeah, this one's... Exactly. I Irie in chat, you know, uh, one of the top players. I think Irie's ranked second as we speak. Says, Xenia could have been faster by like half a second. You know, if you started shooting now, but like, bare, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe a third of a second, maybe, maybe 0.2, but the rest of the run is kooky good, is what Irie says, and you can't help but agree with that, because, like, look at this, boosting off the ammo dump is so rare, no back boosts here, a boost there, and then a perfect warp, like, it, it's, it's almost more than you can ask for. And we're taking a look at the rankings here because, um, I mean, we got to. We absolutely have to at this point in time. <laughs> Irie says you can do a running Xenia which saves 0.36 having full speed. That sounds impossibly insane. But we can see four guys have 52. I mean, Irie has 52, so he knows what he's talking about on the stage, about this running Xenia that can save 0.36. And so certainly that's out there. Someone could match this. Um, but you wonder about 48 agent. We see five guys with 49 agent. Could 48 happen there? But Shores has the untied on secret double agent, which makes it a very, very good, uh, a very cool set of records to have. And then if we look at the untied's all time list, we can see that jungle secret agent 53 stood for six, over six years. And it's the second longest staying untied ever. And... You know, it's kind of crazy because that six years is 2,200 days. And, like, look, Joris's record's now at 1,300 days. Like, it's 
you know, that's what's crazy is that obviously during the beginning of the plague era, um, many guys, you know, picked up a controller for the first time in a while and got some insane records. And um, it's insane that we're now three and a half years removed from that. And so these records are slowly climbing up and, and you know, beginning to grip into the top 10 all time territory. You know, and so who will tie them? What will happen? Et cetera, et cetera. Nobody knows, my friends. Nobody can predict the future. So this is February 2022. Riolo's Depot 0045. I gotta think. Like, when he got this, it was, like, very, very shocking because, like, Carl had only recently gotten 46. And I forget how many people had 46. Like, it wasn't many. And then... Gus, like, just jumping it to 45 just was really, really shocking. And so it's really hard to, like, pinpoint if this record is... underrated or overrated. You know? Okay, so the, the record has been 46 for, like, two years' time. So Samo in chat says he got a 45 missed key FML. If you remember the FML analogy. It's a bit of an older internet analogy. 45, it's insane. Yeah, and Irie in chat says it's wild 45 has not been tied yet because it is a great record um, that's been grinded for hundreds and hundreds of hours by all the best depot players yes I did call FML an analogy when it is an acronym my apologies sometimes there's a lot you just misspeak but we can see Gus actually used the 5 bullets into the mainframe before Samos 38 did and on double O that's like a very sort of scary strategy because you could pass away from the um, explosion. Well, you kind of got to go for it. Yeah, Chris G's in chat mentioning all the ways he missed 45. Missed key, blocked by guards, no A complete, no train shot, no B complete. Every single way possible, he's got 45 failed. And so maybe, like, maybe Gus just had divine chance on his side. You know, maybe... The gods of Depot smiled upon him kindly when he was playing this. I mean, Depot 46 to me, like... Also, I don't have good memories of it because I kind of, like, melted down when going through on stream in 2018. It was kind of not a good time. But that's life, you know? You, you move on, you overcome. A couple of boosts. I mean, like, the main premiere is really, really good. And then the difficulties, because you have to play 2.x for the open door here, which saves like three seconds, you have to do the ammo double 2.x. Okay, one boost. He must have he must have a boost somewhere else. He must have a boost coming here because he had uh, one health bar gone. And so it makes the ammo dump quite difficult. There's a lot of different strategies to do it. Yeah, getting the boost in the headshots is really difficult, but anyways, he gets a Deutsch there, B5K. It's like two, three boosts. He's at like four boosts now. Another one here, five boosts. Opens it up. And then that's difficult. Everyone has kind of a different way of setting up for that shot. But to do with two controllers is quite a challenge. And then he goes here with the with the D5K train shot, which is a little bit on the rarer side. You usually see PP7 train shot. Although, well, I guess it's kind of just a, whatever you feel better with. I think Chris G sums it up. Easy to pace, difficult to complete. And, like, it's one of those things where, like, maybe I have some anti-depot bias or something, but, like, I just feel as though of the records we've watched tonight thus far, and there's been... How many have we watched now? Um, all but seven, so 17. I feel like of these 17 records, the Depot 0045 and Depot SA38 are the ones that are most likely to be tied. Like, I could be wrong about that. Um, I could be off base, but that's just sort of the, the sentiment I, I get for some reason. They kind of seem like the ones that 
the most players have a good chance of tying. Quick time out here. Sammy, Sammy Samo, I said the name in reverse, says, 45 will never be tied because I'm going to skip to 44. Screen cap this post. You know, I will. I will. All right, so here we are now. We've made our way through the 17 most recent GoldenEye untitled records. And now we have only the top seven remaining. And it's interesting because these top seven, I think, are going to be significant in the history of GoldenEye for a long time. And what's also interesting is that they are the pre-plague untitled records. The most recent of which being... Kali's Surface One Secret Agent 146 from January 27th, 2020. And of course, while, you know, this and that may have been ongoing here and there throughout the world at the time, people were still, you know, free to, um, I, I would say, in blissful ignorance as to what was about to happen. You know, me and Ace were following it every single day, watching the reports from our friend Steve Luckner on Agenda Free TV. He was right on it back in January 2020. But most people were very, very blissfully ignorant at the way the world was about to change forever. Cali was perhaps one of these folks happily playing Surface One Secret Agent 146. And why not? You know? This run is, like, beyond insane, honestly. I'm, how many people have 147 now? I mean, only, only six people have 147. He has 146. Let's watch it. I believe, actually, it was the closing run of... Yeah, closing run of Project 2020, which is probably the most insane horde in terms of untitled records. Over a thousand 147 dupes. 11-1 ratio and um 13 hour session broke the barrier down to 11059 just so much historical significance on this what do you say The fact that there is one back boost in this is insane, and uh... It just kind of shows you how the Gold Knight timer works in mysterious ways. One boost, two boosts. Three, four... I mean, it's just mastery of the 2.0 single style and like brute forcing a run. 6 7. Blows it. 7 1, 8 1. 9 1 boost ratio. Man, it feels like he could have got like more than 9 1. Ammo off screen is kind of crazy because I feel like I, for I would forget how many uh, GL shots I have left. But there is an argument that ammo off screen helps reduce lag. That may simply be a common misconception or a Clemens myth. But really good movement there. I love the left strafe, man. I tried to bring that up in like 2007 and no one believed me. So I'm glad Cali like made it happen, you know? Kudos to him on that. Like it's one of those runs where like it's a perfect run and like maybe the back boost just like didn't waste any time let alone a third of a second. 146 Secret Agent, closing run of Project 2020. Probably the, you know, there were hordes after it, but like, like I did, I said the analogy earlier with like the peak of streaming, I think Project 2020 was the peak of hoarding. And it's all kind of been on the downward slope since then. There has been some good hordes, so it can be wrong, but the trajectory is going downwards. And there were a couple points when, like, he could have got more boosts, right? So he had 11 1. And so this is fine. He, you know, if that's a boost, instead of 11 1, he's 12 0. And then, like, he could have got shot here. Okay, he did. So that's okay. That's fine. This is good. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. That's so Sam was saying easy to see 13-0, and that's exactly what's getting at. So 11 0 is 11 1 is plus 10 uh, boost revenue. Whereas 13 0 is plus 13 boost revenue. So that's maybe making 145 possible. That being said, no one else has. See there, that, that one made it 13 0. And then you can get a guard boost here. Like, 14-0 is possible, you know, maybe even more. And so, like, yeah, 145 is probably on paper you can draw it up. Even so, this 146, like, the overarching question that I want to ask in today's lore is basically this. Will Cali hold the LSU at any point? And so, in order for that to be yes... These three ace records, which we're going to get into soon enough, will have to be tied. Will they be tied? Maybe, maybe not. Will they be tied before Cali's records are tied? Maybe, maybe not, you know? And so, certainly, you know, he has other records like um, Dam and Statue down here. But, like, his surface ones are the best candidates for this to happen. And, like, Cali has made a name for himself as, like, you know one of the greats of this era. If we look at the leaders page, he's second in world records to ace. And so, and look, Joris and, and Chris, you know, are, are right up there. And, you know, we've seen some Joris runs. Chris has been in chat. And it's like, it's sort of this like push and pull and ebb and flow of like what will happen. And like, nobody really knows. I don't think anyone's really expecting Facility 42 to be that longest standing on tide and make it into the top 10 when it was set necessarily but here we are i mean maybe people were but yeah and uh ace mentions front of front of uh hut so there is a, a better grenade launcher pickup that has been sort of uh you, you go here and you pick it up from the front of the you know left side front kind of which might be a touch faster I guess the point is, 145 is probably possible, but 146 is still untied, and very few people have a chance at getting it. Like, 147, double O, which we'll watch in a little bit, is going to be tied before 146, in my opinion. But we have some other runs to get to. Control, double O agent, 402. So this, was this in Project 2020, Ace? I feel like it was posted outside of Project 2020. Although Ace was in that Horde project. Um, and Control 00402, I mean, it's an insane run. We're going to dedicate this one. It is... But, like, I remember having so much fun watching these Clem streams in summer of 2019. Um, and then Ace just immediately lowers them, using a bevy of new strategies. We're going to dedicate this one, however, to our Speedler champion, a, a big dandy four-minute run. To Sewell O'Rock, a huge thanks, Sewell, for your support of Speed Lore on Patreon. Okay, so Ace says this was in Project 2020, so it was hoarded for a few months. It was done in October 2019. It was revealed in about February 2020. And this is going to be like the best control double run you'll ever see. And his control secret agent run, which we'll watch next, another four minute run. Um, is very similar. I mean, watching Ace and Clem play Control is like probably the best elite streams you're ever going to get, in my opinion. Four, five, six, up. Door open. Nice shot there. One back boost, two back boosts. Wow. But it's just so hard to survive the stage. But this run is still amazing. And what does he do here? Gets a hit. Takes some damage and squeezes through. And so in Secret Agent, you can play a little bit more straight shot through there. Which is where the one second difference comes from. But this is what's interesting. This is the strategy that made um, Control, like, improvable again. It's like, that moment... That moment in time, as she's about to turn, you shoot her to angle her backup angle more towards the stairs. 
and thus she's closer to the exit you can get a faster exit than usual and like I think you can shoot like a like seven or eleven times here oh my like but like to survive this is like unconscionable like how scared would you be you know but obviously ace is a pro and that's how he makes it happen He's hit like four additional times. Nice shot. That was a really good like um, awareness on that guy. That's like six arm shots. I'm like, look at look at our positioning. It's so good. On agent, it's one thing, and it made three to five possible, which we'll watch in a bit. But. On oh, secret double O, when you can shoot her like ten times, she's like right by these stairs. Like it's actually insane how far you can get her. Almost feels like you could get her like almost up the stairs. And of course, the game like only like checks for her positioning just to begin hacking, and so it does not replace her positioning. Um, in this context, if you were to look away. For too long or get out of her sort of sphere of influence definitely like going up the stairs looking away and pausing she will warp back to her position at the, at the you know main computer you don't want that so you just really have to kind of play it tight with her here and this strategy makes it even more difficult because you have to pull off a very difficult mine throw at the end instead of while you would normally be just waiting for Natalia to come down the stairs and you have to pull off the end because you have to be present when she makes it to the desk. So you can't do it in that sort of dead time, previous dead time. And it complicates things so much because like there's gonna be guards harassing you. Um, you can easily pass away here. Very, so easily pass away here. But like hitting that, oh my God, and then no health. He has to turn around and shoot Trev and then keep his mind straight to, um, straight enough to dead make the mind and time the ending like, it's just like, oh my god, dude. It's just like, who who's gonna tie this? Who, who on earth? Who on earth is gonna tie this? Like, Clem is one off, okay? Clem with a grind could, could probably do it. Luke has not played in four years. I mean, the record has stood from four years. And that's a bit of an exaggeration. James Wu, Perceptor. Very interesting character because he's like a control specialist, which is like the rarest level to be a specialist on. And he seemed promising for a while, but he kind of petered out here at 40544, which are great times, right? And then look, people like Wotus is like pretty much retired. Everyone else is 407, 408, 409. Like, who is ever gonna get control 00402? Like nobody. You know? And so like when you look at the untied world record list, like it's at 1,472 days. How is this not going to make it way up here in the longest standing untied? It's like, it just has to, it simply has to. And how far will it go is the question. Like it's at 1,400 barring a new strategy. I'd be shocked if control double O doesn't make it to 2000 days which will put in the top five for now. But like, Control SA 41, 401 is, is going to be the exact same here. So, um, yeah, in chat, Art of the Troll asks, is hacking skip the holy grail of GoldenEye speedrunning? And the answer is yes, it is. Um, it's believed to be impossible because we've asked Dr. Doak directly about this. And... He has said, like, the objective is programmed that it completes after two and a half minutes. So there's no way to speed it up. There's no way to quicken the game's timer. If you did, the seconds would go by faster. And so, like, you just have to wait two and a half minutes. That's from the developers themselves. Um, that being said, I will always say, who knows, right? Who knows? 
anyways, Control C Region 401, another beautiful four minute run, which we're gonna watch. And of course, let's dedicate this to our final Speedlord Champion of the night. And this one is gonna go out to our Speedlord Champion, Sammy Limex. A huge thanks to you, Sammy, for all of your support of Speedlord on Patreon. Let's watch our beautiful four minute run. Very similar run, the main difference will be the glass break area. He will break right through it on Secret Agent, as opposed to having to take damage and get an invincibility frame to get through on Double O Agent. And like the thing is, you could YOLO in on Double O and just hope that you get shot at the same moment you, you detonate the mine. But just the odds of it all completing are very, very, very low. Great, like, movement there for that shot. Oh, and, like, he's got two back boosts on 402 double O. And so I kind of almost wonder if, like, the double O run and, like, my eye for controls not that good anymore. Like, look at that. That's obviously faster than what he did on double O. But he also got two back boosts on double O. So, like, I wonder if his first room was better on double O, and it may have been. Why the first mine of those three? I think there's only two mines there, V-Swed. But it, it, you're right. It's just a way... <sighs> Doing two mines of the glass there... It makes the explosion, like, bigger in such a way that, like... You just don't pass away from it for some reason. And, like, you kind of take the first iteration of damage instead of all of it at once. And it kind of helps you get boosted through. It's really hard to, like, explain in words. Yeah, so Ace is saying in chat that he shot out on the scrolling map of the screen. You don't need to shoot it out, okay? It's like, it just helps reduce leg, and even then it's minimal. But, um, it's just been done. I think it was like an early, like, speedrun, like, strategy guide or wiki guide from like 05. Like, boss did it. Anyways. Me and Base Boost did it at the HDQ 2014 run, which is almost 10 years ago now, which is insane. And he, he said, shoutouts to Luke Scalars, a noted Australian speedrunner. And so shooting out Australia has always sort of been the mean thing to do on this level. And Ace, despite it being a very chaotic run, still had to, um, still had the frame of mind to to pull it off despite all the chaos and what's really interesting here is that you can see Natalia's positioning is not as good as it was on the double O run the angle and like you think like in like a couple of frames she's like turning from here to here surrounding the desk and so like the frame by frame of when you shoot her affects the angle and he probably shot her one frame later on this run than his double O run. And so that means she may have escaped like a quarter of a second later. And once again, you know, no back boosts and better glass. I feel like he could get 401 double O and I feel like he could get four minutes on Secret Agent. And so it is possible. I would say unlikely based on the way Ace is playing lately. He's kind of more exploring and doing bomb hacks and stuff lately. But, like, I think the most likely scenario for these control records to be tied or beaten is Ace doing them himself. I think that's a more likely scenario than any other player doing it. The thing with this strategy that's kind of cool is, like, you can kind of just run into the end. I think you have to wait, like, a second or two. So the timing is pretty intuitive. And, yeah, control double O. Control secret agent, rather, 401. Which again is is deep fried. <sighs> I've just said a loss of words. You know, control SA is kind of more fun to play than double O because you survive more. And we can see like, you know, 402, like kind of the most players sort of the heat map of top players on double O's at like 408, 409. Whereas on SA, it's like 405, 406. So could these players jump up and maybe get 401 someday? 
And it's just kind of an interesting question because, like, Dan Parker, Swiss, Gus Riolo, they don't play as much anymore. Green, Ludovic, um, Yendis here. And this Owen is a relatively new player, Owen K. You know, is there a next great generation? Is Owen maybe one or the start of such a generation? Who else is there to come up and contend with Control Secret Agent 401? And I guess the question we have to ask ourselves, like, is there anyone? And, like, is that okay, you know? Like, something like sports are always trying to grow and expand have more players and be more accessible and whatnot. But, like, a speed game of a 26-year-old video game, there's a million video games. Like, does it really matter if a speed game slowly dies out? Like, that's kind of the fate of a speed game. Whereas there's only so many sports to go around, you know? And so, just kind of counterbalancing and, like, thinking about all these things. If you ever wonder what I think about at night when I can't sleep or I'm driving around like Ryan Gosling and drive you know or swimming and just thinking and about random stuff in the world this is what I'm thinking about like literally this is, is it worth is it worth recruiting new players is it okay for a game to die out what does it all mean etc and like for an N64 game, Goldeneye is still going pretty strong. And, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with the state it's in currently. So, who knows. Alright, let's watch the last four runs of the night. October and July 2019. Um, Surface 1, 00, 147. 500, 148 dupes. 8.5 to 0 ratio. First ever Goldeneye tied. Horden Project 2020 and once again like this this will be tied before 146 secret agent I would if I were a betting man I would say that but let's give it a watch it's a good run it's a really good run still obviously it's been untied for over four years well another thing now more more to Sarah in chat who says uh, gold Knight will never die is like the fact that it exists on switch and xbox like, I was able to pick up a Switch wireless controller. I saw they were in stock, and I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. Um, in a way, it keeps them alive, but in another way, like, if I speedrun, I will play that version now. You know, I could I could play Damn Double O Switch version and go for 155 there and get the untie. And so it doesn't contribute to the same history. It's a bit of a different history. And, like, maybe that's okay, right? Like, you look at the history of nations throughout, you know, like, like France or Germany or whatever, and it's like, they've gone through numerous iterations of history. Maybe, like, how Goldeneye will go through numerous iterations of it, its speed game, its main version, you know? Again, there's a lot to think about, and this is just sort of... I guess my outlet and platform to think about these with you guys and explore these ideas. Yeah, that boost was interesting there. Kind of got like a... I, I can see these kind of half boosts. Cali count at least one as a half boost because he was about to like boost himself with a grenade launcher and then um, a guard shot him. But the idea is that, like, you're not going to get as many boosts on Double Agent because you will you have less health, or you take more damage, and you also have less shots in the grenade launcher, so you can't, like, self-boost as much either. You have four as opposed to six, I believe. So, like, it's, um... It's a great run. It's still on time for four years. But it's more tieable than 146, in my opinion. And he's, this is his first ever untied. I know the feeling. It's amazing. Wow. Oh my god. Is it going to be it? And then you click A and then it is it. And you're thrilled. You're thrilled. Because now you feel... You know, I'm not going to analogize it. But there's some things you do in life that you feel like... Wow. I did it. You know? So that's a great run. 
I mean, 148.00 back in 2012, I feel like that was like a controversial record. Like, oh, Clems was removed because he didn't have proof. Yeah, he claimed it on September 4th, 2011. And then Mark got the first proven one. And then I saw Clem's cart at the Eclipse meet in 2017, and my mind was blown that it was on his cart. I was like, oh my god, he, I, I didn't believe him back then, right? No vid, no did, etc. But yeah, I mean, you, you just, all you have to do is look at how many people have 148.00. It's 15. How many people have 147.SA? It's 6. And like, it is more likely that one of these guys will cut the second to 147.00 than 146 SA and so that leaves the three ace records again they're all at like 1500 days and they will all be very soon knocking these times out of the rankings surface 1 double 125 which is a historic record because of how Clem has dominated that stage for decades Dan 52 being knocked out is like actually kind of insane and remarkable to think about. And then Bunker 254, that one is kind of, uh, I'll call it more of a rogue record that you can kind of accept it being knocked out. But hey, Control 355. I haven't watched this run in a long time. I'm keen to see the Natalia strategy because I haven't seen it in a while. And uh, as we as we get to the towards the end of the lore here, I'm going to talk a little bit less because after two hours straight of talking, my voice is starting to uh, decay a little bit. You know, after two hours, it happens. Even when I was streaming like four or five hours a day, a lot of it was speedrunning, and so like I would be quiet for like a minute at a time, and then talk for ten seconds. But in the lore, you're just going solid. I have no idea how guys like who stream 12 hours a day do it. Just a pristine run thus far. Tefra2 in chat asks how much longer the stream will be. Probably um, five or ten minutes, and as we saw, just as she takes the step to the turn. He shoots her. And starts to back her up, and he can only do this, you know, five times roughly. As opposed to... You know, the ten times he was doing on SA double O. You know, who knows, Tefra, maybe a little bit longer. I might hang on and chat a little bit, as we sometimes do. I actually have some, some, uh... Conversations to, you know, bounce around. So maybe we'll hang out after concluding the lore a little bit. He's checking the mainframe very, again, like... You can really see in these ace runs, like, he's such a, a pro at this point in time. And, uh, a lot of awareness, you know. I'll say a lesser player, a more stressed player, less experienced, may forget to check all the mainframes and might miss one inadvertently. Especially that one over there. Well, that was really good to leave him for a second to, like, time the kind of spawns. That one over there, you're usually throwing the mine on the right side of the area, and so sometimes the explosion does not blow up the mainframe, and it's good to check. Kind of ballsy, like to leave it that late. Cause like he, let's say a, oh my god, shooting the mine too. Let's say one of the guards who goes after you spawned right in that moment, as you were about to shoot him, and like you missed shooting him, and then he shot Natalia. Like it's it's kind of, 
if you really want to get super picky, you could call it an unnecessary risk, but like, I'm not gonna get that picky right now. Good, great timing, Natalia's safe. And uh, watch her go, bingo bango. It's Agent, you have a lot of health to pull this off. And then you start to time the ending. Completes. I mean, 355 is beautiful. I mean, just kind of a crazy time to see on screen there. It's the only record in the game in the main, you know, 60 levels that starts with a 3. There's a fun fact for you. Only statue starts with 2, right? Yeah. But only control agent starts with three and then SA004. I think something interesting here. Control went through a weird phase where nobody got three. Oh, still. Okay. So this is like the most bizarre level because obviously 356 was the record before Ace got 355 in 2019. No new player has gotten 356 since 2016. Like, what in the world, dude? There's so many, like, good players now. Cowley got 357 in May. Troy in January 2022. Man, nobody plays Control Agent for some reason. Everyone gets 358 and, like, calls it there. I mean, 357 took me, like, 100 hours. 73 hours. So, like, I get it. But that was with the older strategy. Like, man. <sighs> Maybe I should return and play for Control Agent 356. Maybe. But now we're going to talk about a funny record. Caverns 00129. And what happened was... Wotus had this 130 which had briefly become the LSU in 2012 at, like, longest standing active untied. So it was three years untied. So it was still, you know, that's, what, like 1,100 days? It was still a far cry away from making the top 10 list. But anytime a record does become the longest standing active untied, it does get a bit of a target on its back. And this was the whole kind of troll story where I wanted to set it up as if Ogran Streets 00 154 was the LSU because I achieved it. I was going to unhoard it during lore and make it this epic thing, which we did. It was cool. Um, so in order for that to, in order for that stage to be set, Caverns 00 129 had 130 by Wotus had to be tied, and uh, what was funny there is that. Yeah, here's what I was looking for. 1,100 days, Wotus well, had it. I tried to go for 130, and I actually had a 130 failed B. I, like, actually came really close to getting it. But then we convinced Clem and Ace to play for it. Clem had a lot of close calls. He only got this 130, you know, last year. He had 131 for a long time. Couldn't quite get the 130, but then Ace came along and pretty much caked this time. And so, the fact that this is the second longest thing on hide, this one could and probably should be tied sometime soon. But I guess the thing is, like, you know, it's hard to get a really clean and good run here. And... I don't know, in a way, it's kind of like Silo 00121 in a lot of ways. It's like players are close, but no one's, like, been able to, like, do it yet, you know? I think that's kind of the way to summarize this stage. Good switch to left strafe there. I like it. So you gotta strafe, you gotta switch at, at some point, and so doing it there when the guards were lured out is a good call. Back boost there. But then his B area is just going to be insane, and then everything else is going to be insane. Like, just so smooth. Full speed. I mean, that that dip left full speed and blowing up the things. 
One mine, two mine, boost. These don't matter. Actually killed the guard. Skips the BA, doesn't need it. Gets like a boost coming out. Behind Running behind the scientist is so good and smart to avoid back boosts. One back there, two backs there. So I had like three backs total. A tiny stuck, but a good warp in. It's just like this time is... Like, it is a great time. Do not get me wrong. This is a great time. But it's not like... It's not so good that it can't be tied. And the fact that it's number two overall... I don't want to say it's like overrated, but I say, I'm say i going to say it's a bit beyond its britches. You know, that's, that's how I'll describe it. It could stand to be tied any day now. But will it? Like, there's a very reasonable chance that it is going to last two more months and make it to eighth even seventh overall and like if it's seventh what's what's it going to stop it from making sixth or fifth or fourth or third you know is that 1500 days it would need more than two years to get to crack it would need over two years to crack the top two the top two are pretty safe but like it could make it to third or fourth you know which is insane because it's tieable and a lot of guys, like Wotus obviously could if he came back. Clem could get it. Mark, Luke, Gus, Irie, Will. You know, I, I could get 130. 129's a little bit beyond, I think, my my level. I wouldn't want to grind it for like 150 hours to get that good. But I think there's a lot of guys who could get 129. And so the fact that it's still standing that high is, is uh, quite something. But... This all sets up for number one, the longest thing on tide. And quite frankly, facility 42, like 43 was considered one of the best records when it was gotten. And like, I just, I don't know that anyone can tie this time anytime soon. Ace barely, barely got 42, it was like a 42.9. And he's tried to dupe it, hasn't done it yet. I think 42 is deserving of this spot and may go, may make a run here for a very long time. So let's watch the run to conclude the night, my friends. Nice boost, nice boost. This is great movie, they're underrated how hard that is. Full speed the whole way. Listen for the music change. Oh my, he's through the door when the tone changes. The guard, such a lucky guard roll there. That guard is such a pain. Oh my, this run's shocking. English version, so you can get time not saved if you time the ending perfectly to the frame. Which he does. 42. He wants facility 42 time saved. So you need to exit one frame after Trevelyan completes. So you need to be at least one frame better than this. And I would assume Ace will get it. Will he get 41? Almost no way possible. Like, like, I think he was playing with splits, and he determined like it might be possible, like in theory, to get 41. But like, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And so, 42 is going to be the record. Ace on tide. Your guess is as good as mine as to how long this one's going to go. Look at that guard rolling away, and he like doesn't get stuck or anything. It, it, it's like. Iconic. It's iconic. There it is, baby. There it is. You know what? What good is is uh, a lore and a stream if you don't kind of, you know, 
make a stand and kind of get out, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit too insane, but every now and then it's okay. I'm going to predict for all intents and purposes. And we know that, you know, there's some records like Bunker SA 19 that are probably never going to be tied. It's just such an insane record. But for the sake of this lore, the lore about the longest standing untied, why not go here? I'm just going to say it. Facility Agent 42 will never be tied. And this will become the permanent longest standing untied world record in GoldenEye for the rest of time. That's what I'm going to say here. Maybe it'll end up as a clip one day. But that's what I'm going to say right now. Facility 42, Untied Forever, it will become number one on the list. And I suppose that answers the question that I set out to answer two hours ago when I started the stream. And that was, will Callie ever hold the longest steady Untied with maybe his Surface 1 SA 146 or even his Surface 1 Agent 101? And the answer is, I just don't see anyone tying Facility Agent 42. I just, I just don't see a circumstance where that happens. And as a result, tonight at this moment, you know, you, you do sometimes regret or change how you feel in any given moment. But in this moment, not only am I euphoric, I'm predicting Facility Agent 42 never gets tied for the rest of GoldenEye history. And as a result, Cowley unfortunately never gets the LSU and nor does anyone else on this list. We watched 24 amazing world records today. Simply amazing untitled record. They're all great. And Facility 42 is not even the best one. Like Bunker 119 is better, but in the context of longest stay untied, Facility 42 will be the one forever. Hey, maybe I'm off base. I know it's a bit of an outrageous claim, but I made it, and so sometimes you just gotta stick with it at least, at least for a night, you know. So, my good friends, that will indeed do it. Speed lore for this month. Thank you to all the speed lore legends and speed lore champions for supporting the stream, the series on Patreon. A huge thanks, a huge thanks for your patience here. I know we went to the next month a little bit, uh, so I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back at the end of this month with another episode. And then, of course, in uh, at the end of the year with the full recap. The full recap. And you better uh, buckle in for that one because even though GoldenEyes had a, 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 a bit of a slow year, Perfect Dark has not. And so we're going to watch a lot of really amazing records for the 2023 year in review. Believe it or not, baby... It is November, we're getting there, and uh, hey, thanks for watching and supporting throughout the year to everyone. Much appreciated, especially the legends and champions, but even the chatters and lurkers and so on. So hey, thank you all for watching. Congratulations to all the amazing speedrunners achieving record times. Stay true, my friends. I'll see you in the next streamer video, and good night.